Hello everyone and welcome to our fall 2020 book study where we are digging deeper into the distance learning playbook. Um, we know that this is a really relevant topic for our current circumstances as we're all kind of on this new learning curve as we transition to um, meeting our students needs in that distance learning setting. My name is Misty Higgins. I am a professional learning coordinator with the Division of Program Standards and also joining me today my name is Carrie McDaniel. I am also with the Division of Program Standards as a professional learning coordinator. And so throughout this study, you're going to see our faces a lot. We'll be working behind the scenes within the Google Classroom. You'll see us on a lot of videos that we will make to support our work through the study, as well as we will kind of be the faces you will see within those live meetings that we're going to have um, throughout this fall. Our purpose for today's video, the learning goal is that we are learning how to use Google Classroom as we dig deeper into this topic of distance learning. So the success criteria, by the end of this video, we want you to be able to explain the function of stream in terms of how we're gonna utilize it in our Google Classroom, that you can explain the function of the classwork tab as we're going to use it within the Google Classroom. And then finally, that you can explain the expectations for completing the first month's topic within our Google Classroom. A couple of things we wanted to share with you up front is one, we are so overwhelmed by the response that we got to this book study as we have over 800 educators that have registered to participate. Um, so it really does make this truly a statewide collaboration. And actually we have people from out of state that are joining us and even one person from out of the country. So thank you guys for wanting to join and participate um, through this book study. Um, in the group, we have a ton of teachers, instructional specialist. We have school and district leaders. We have several professors from our local colleges and universities, as well as a lot of regional and state support staff. Um, and because of the high number of people, the volume that we had, we desire, decided to create two Google Classrooms. And so one thing we want you to know, those classrooms are a mirror image of each other. So they are going to have the same structure and the same content within them. Um, so you will have multiple opportunities to interact with people within your Google Classroom. But we also wanted to ensure that you were able to um, interact with people in the other Google Classroom as well. And that will be part of the purpose of our monthly synchronous meetings is to give you that chance to again interact with the other classroom as well. Let's dig into our first success criterion where we want you to be able to explain the function of how we're going to utilize the stream within Google Classroom. When you open Google Classroom, the opening page is the classroom stream. Um, you'll see that you'll know you're on the tab for the stream. If you see the um, the arrow at the top of the page, what's underlined is stream. That's how you know you're in the stream tab. And you'll notice that it says there like share something with your class. So this is a place where you can post and respond to things people are saying. So how are we going to utilize the stream um, tab within our study? One, we're going to use it to just kind of send reminders to participants throughout the study, whether that's maybe like a reminder of an upcoming synchronous meeting. We're also going to use the stream to post questions or quotes maybe from the text to really encourage interaction and collaboration of the participants within each Google Classroom. Um, in addition, we want to use that stream to kind of capture some of the ideas and experiences that you are having as you apply your learning from the study to your actual practice. And so, for example, we will within the first week of starting the study, we will post something in the stream where we want to know what are some ways that you are connecting and getting to know your students in the distance learning setting. And we'll probably do that through a Padlet wall so everyone will be able to add their ideas and it's all housed in one place. So everyone within the Google Classroom can easily locate and access that to find new ideas for how they can connect with their students. Um, the idea is that every two weeks within the stream, we will pose a question or we'll pull out a quote or we'll put something in there to gather ideas. And again, they're not required for you to respond to, but we strongly recommend that you utilize this as a way for you to connect with other educators in the study um, and get the most out of this study that you can. And then finally, we're going to use this stream to respond to questions that you might have. So it's a place for you to post questions and for us to respond to those. So now let's take a look at the function of classwork in Google Classroom. 
So when in when you get into your Google Classroom, you're going to want to click on that second tab at the top. And the way we're going to use the classwork tab is first of all, we're going to be referencing the learning plan for the study. So the learning plan, which we've already posted, you should have gotten an alert that that was posted today. Um, that is really your learning, your kind of your big picture overview or your high level overview for the study. Um, and so many of you may want to look back at that throughout the study. That will be there for you for you to continually reference. Um, also, there will be some resources and examples to support the text. So when you think about, for example, we may be posting and we will be posting some resources such as Doug Fisher has some resources, for example, that are schedules for both elementary and secondary levels. So those could be some resources that we will be posting within that classwork tab for you to access. Uh, your monthly assignments, so you'll be able to access and complete those there within the classwork tab. OK, and um, those monthly assignments, much like this video, our video that we're doing today will actually post a link to this within the classwork tab for you to continually access. And each month we'll create a video on the topics that we study. So we'll post a video in the classwork tab for your reference to come back to. And it'll just kind of give you that overview of what to expect, what topics to expect throughout the study. So this is what the classwork tab will look like, OK, uh, for you starting on September 9th. So notice we've organized the classwork tab by topic for each month, OK, and it really mimics the text and it also mimics the learning plan modules as well. Now these are self paced, so they are organized by month to kind of help keep you on schedule and on track, but just know that you can use this as a way to at a pace that works best for you, um, which is why we're going live on September 9th. So all of the resources, all of the materials will be in here on September 9th for you to locate, for you to utilize at your convenience, um, but we never want anyone not participating because you know because of their schedules so um, let's start with what's listed under general resources so when you click on the link um, you're going to see this is a sample of what you'll see there's a description there under the distance learning playbook study plan with a link directly to that google doc so you will just click on that picture there of the distance learning plan and so you'll notice that the top of the distance learning playbook study plan, uh, we've broken it down into month, purpose, watch, read and attend, reflect and respond and extend. So under month, you'll notice that the topics that we're studying for each month are listed there for you. So for the month of September, we'll be studying preparing for distance learning. That aligns with, again, the topics in your text, so they're followed by the modules within the text. OK, they are aligned with those. Um, under purpose, you'll notice we have the learning goals and the success criteria outlined there for you for each individual module. And then under watch, read and attend, this really clarifies for you exactly what the expectations are for you, what you're going to be watching, reading and when you will be attending those synchronous meetings. Now, this particular recording we're doing today will actually be linked in next week under that watch portion. So you can refer back to it if you like, and it just again will give you an overview of what we're learning in September. That reflect and respond column in column four. So notice that um, you'll see again, and we're going to talk more about this in depth in just a minute, but this is your place to respond. There are some questions where all participants will respond as well as some where you will have a choice. And then finally, that last column, that's an extend column, OK? And so we wanted to be able to offer to you multiple perspectives throughout the study. So those are some links that are optional for you to really dig into that content and learn more. So let's take a further look at the extension activity in Google Classroom. So again, this is what your screen will look like under the classwork tab. 
just know that under each month, you'll be able to access optional extensions here, and they will always be listed first. So you'll have your optional extensions for each month, and then your reflect and respond under. So you'll find those for each month for September through December. So this is what you're going to see when you click on the extensions. It will give you a quick description with a link to the document or resource that's being used or being offered here. So you'll notice for this particular month for September, we've got a resource from West Ed, we've got a PBIS resource, as well as an ASCD article for you to access. So now let's quickly talk about the monthly assignments. So each month there are two assignments that you will complete. The first is what we are calling the reflect and respond task, and the second is the synchronous meeting choice. So when we look at the reflect and respond task, the purpose of these is to allow you a chance to synthesize your learning and make connections from your own background knowledge to what you are learning from the text, as well as being able to apply that learning in a way that is relevant to whatever your current role might be. To ask, access the reflect and respond task, you'll see on the screen, this is just a snapshot from the classwork tab for the month of October. You, they're always titled reflect and respond. And then out from it, it'll just be a colon with the title of whatever the topic is for that month. So to complete the reflect and respond assignments, you would simply click on that and it's going to give you two options of how you can go about completing the assignment. If you prefer to complete the assignment in a written format, in a written form, then you would choose the Google Doc. When you click on the Google Doc, it'll bring you up, it'll bring up your own copy of the assignment. So you don't have to worry about this editing someone else's or the master copy. This is your own assignment. And you will see that within the Google Doc, we have provided a space for you to be able to type in your response. Now, please note, you can use as much space as you want. You can make that table much larger, but we just wanted to give you a designated space of where we want you to type that um, assignment response in. Once you've completed the Google Doc, don't forget to hit submit so that we can see on our end that you have submitted that assignment. The other option is if you prefer to verbally share your responses, you can do that by recording your response in Flipgrid. So to do that option, you simply click on or click on the Flipgrid and it's going to open a new tab for you that looks like this. To do the recording, simply click on that big red circle that says record a response, and then it's going to prompt you to log in either using a Google email or a Microsoft email. And then once you log in, it'll take you to a screen where you have up to 10 minutes to record your response. The second type of assignment that you're going to see is the synchronous meeting choice. Um, the purpose of these synchronous meetings, and especially in giving you a choice in those, is we wanted to provide you with options to help accommodate the different schedules we know people have, um, and also to accommodate the different time zones that we have in Kentucky as well. So when you look at the time and date, you will see that one has a later start time to better accommodate those who might be in Western Kentucky within the central time zone. The other reason we are asking you to make a choice each month of which meeting you want to attend is it helps with planning on our end so that we can ensure that we're or, um, optimizing your opportunities to participate in terms of engagement within those live sessions. It just helps us to better manage those. So the way that you would complete this particular assignment again under each month, this is a snapshot from October, simply click on that month's synchronous meeting choice. And you're going to see when you expand it that there's a link to a Google form. This is what the Google form looks like. Um, one thing to make note of in the directions at the top, it's really important that you write down which date and time you selected for that month so that you can mark it on your calendar so you don't forget. And the place where you make the choice is at the bottom of that form. So you can see for October, you have two choices, a different date and time for each that best fits your schedule. So now let's take a look at the expectations for completing the first month's topic in Google Classroom. So September is really all about preparing for that distance learning. So again, like I mentioned before, you'll have the topic listed on the left hand side. So September is listed there for you. 
And in that second column, we have the learning goals listed there. So really it's all about that self care during distance learning and creating and managing your distance learning classroom. There are success criteria listed there for modules one and two, and those are aligned with our particular reflect and respond activity. So we've tried to be very intentional in making sure that those are aligned for you. And so um, then in column three, you'll notice where it says watch, read and attend. We will be linking, like I said before, the video from today right here under watch. So you'll see that linked later on. And then you'll see your reading assignments listed there for each module as well as the attend. Now the attend is where you're going to see links to those synchronous sessions that we're going to have. And for months after September, you'll actually see a choice listed there like Misty mentioned before. So you'll see the two dates that you have as options that you'll need to select from. And then in the reflect and respond column, notice that you have two options there or not options, but um, you have two sections there, so sometimes you will have sections that will say all participants respond. So for September, we're asking that all of you respond to this first set of questions. And then for choose one of the three, you will select from the three questions there that you feel like you'll select one of those from the three that you feel like best aligns with your role in your school or district. And then moving on to the extend column in column five, you'll notice for September we have three resources offered to you. We have a West Ed resource on self care. So how is it going back to our learning goals? How is it that we're learning about self care during distance learning and how can we maintain that as educators? And then for from the PBIS resource, we've got a teaching matrix there with some strategies for remote instruction that might be helpful as well as an ASCD article on creating a safe digital space. So if you want to go deeper, you've got some extension resources there that are optional. And so let's look at those a little, um, move into those a little more closely. Um, but just keep in mind, if you don't have time to read all of the assignments prior to the synchronous meetings, we still want you to be able to participate. We still want you to be with us. So please join in on those meetings. Um, regardless of whether you've had time to read all of those or not, because you still are able to contribute and we'll get something out of our discussions and our collaboration together. And Carrie, just to add, um, we will be sending next week um, the link for the live session with Doug Fisher. So the reason we don't have um, an option on this particular month is that is just when Doug was available to be able to meet with us. Um, and so again, please just know that we will send the link out next week and also we'll add that live link into the study plan and update that in the classroom. Right, and we're so excited he's going to be joining us. It's going to be a great time, and I think we're, we're going to all learn from, from him and from our work together. It's going to be very exciting. So if you have questions moving forward, please don't hesitate to reach out to Ms. Dira. We've included our email addresses here, or you can reach us through the Google Classroom stream, um, but we want you to know we're available to you with any questions you may have along the way.